congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, as we look at our text today, we ask Jesus to look on me. But the reality of it is, is that Jesus in his love for each one of you does look upon you. And he went to the cross in order to suffer and die, to take away your sins, in order to, to serve us, to be our Lord, to be our Savior, and be the one that lowers himself in order to be a servant to us, to be a slave for us. And so we come before Jesus Christ and we hear these words that are brought to us in our gospel lesson today, which are so important because it really hits at the heart of what our human life is like. Because we are no different than those disciples that are there. We want to be exalted. We want to be served. We want somebody to take care of us. Believe me, I know. Because I'm just as much. We like it when we are served. Like I said in, in our, in our, our uh, uh, children's message here this minute, that's one of the reasons why we like to go out to restaurants, isn't it? It's because we get to be served. We don't have to fix that dinner. We don't have to clean up after ourselves. We don't have to do the dishes. And in fact, that's one of the things that we do. And I know we've got several people that travel in, in our congregation, several people that enjoy going to, to places. That's one of the reasons why we go. In fact, we got a Punta Cana crowd back here. And I love to tease them about Punta Cana. And the whole reason you go down there is because you don't have to do anything, do you? In fact, when, uh, if you want one of those little drinks in the, with, a, with an umbrella and that in it, you just tell somebody and they go get it. You don't have any kind of worries. You don't have anything that you have to do. If you want something, they'll get it for you. We all like that kind of thing. But, you know, as we look at our lives, that's really kind of the attitude that we want to have, isn't it? We want to be served. We want to be taken care of. We want people to wait on us hand and feet. After all, isn't that the lifestyle that's put out there for those? The more wealth that you have, the more servants that you have. It starts off with people to come and cut the grass. And then it becomes a gardener. And then we have to, of course, on the inside, we have to, maybe it starts off with calling in uh, merry maids or one of those type of places. And eventually we have to have, as we become more affluent, what has to happen is I not only have to have that, I have to have a live-in maid and then a butler and then somebody to chauffeur me around. Isn't that what the, the picture of this world wants us to do? Isn't that what it shows us? Whenever we look at those magazines that talks about living the luxurious life, it's all about being served. Well, see, that's the attitude that the human spirit wants to have. That's the attitude that this world tries to push out there. That everything out there needs to be all about me. I need to be one taken care of. I need to be the one that serves. Well, that's exactly what John, uh, James and John thought, wasn't it? In fact, what they did was they kind of pulled Jesus over to him and said, Hey, Jesus, well, I got you here. Well, I got you secluded over here. I want to ask you a question. So Jesus says, what do you want? He says, when we come into glory, when you come into glory, when you go to heaven, can you reserve those two spots next to you? And yeah, one for me and one for John over here. Can we sit at your right hand and your left hand? Well, first of all, the reality of it is, is they, don't, they didn't know what they, they were asking about. You see, that's part of our human thing, in it, uh, isn't it, too? We don't always understand what it is that we ask about. Well, you know, we see that all the time, don't we? You know, one of the big things that people pick on, uh, on about now is, is how much a CEO gets paid for running a company, especially these huge companies. Well, they shouldn't get that kind of money. Well, it's always the human nature to think that the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, isn't it? Not to realize that they give up a great deal of their time. Not to realize that if you, you mess up, because most of us mess up, who doesn't mess up? Anybody here? No, nobody here? Cassie, I know better than that. You know better than that. We all mess up. We're all prone to that. That's what it means to live in a sinful world. But could you imagine going to work every day and if you messed up bad enough, you know, if you messed up, you could be out of a job and never have, never have the ability to work again? 
That's why they get paid the big bucks. But yet we look at it from the standpoint, oh, it's so easy. All they do is get up and run around and do this and do that. It's the same thing, really, for people with pastors. How many times do people pass, uh, look at pastors? Uh, in fact, there are a lot of people that, that try to get into the ministry and say, I want to be a pastor. I want to look at that. Look, after all, they only work one day a week. And that's only a half day to begin with. Not to realize that the sacrifice that's there. And many times that a pastor's called out in the middle of the night. Or, or when there's a birthday party or some kind of things. In fact, at, at, at my other congregation, we were hosting a party. And in the middle of it, I get a phone call because somebody's grandmother was dying. I had to leave the party. The sacrifice that the children and the wife have to make. Because dad's not always there because he's always off doing something else. You see, that's the thing about it is, is we also look at that. And, and, then the, and, and then, of course, if you really want to talk about it, the big thing is, is we don't get paid the big bucks like the, like the CEOs do either. But, you know, that's the thing about it is, is people always think about that. And they want something that they don't understand. And in fact, we see that here, and that's why, that's why it was recorded the way that it was in St. Mark, as when these disciples went to them, and he, said, he says, you know, Jesus, we want to sit at your right and left hand. And he says, do you not know what you're asking for? He said, will you drink a cup like mine? Will you do a baptism like me? And they probably didn't even get that, not understanding that what Jesus was doing was foretelling the death that he would do. That he would have to go to the cross. And that he would die in order to serve his people. That his job meant that he would have to hang on a tree. And that he would have to be uh, stricken, smitten, and afflicted. That he would be beaten and called names. How many of you would take that on? But yet, a lot of times in our lives do we think, God, look at how good I am. Will you put me at your right hand or your left? We do. Oftentimes, that's the way that we think. Oftentimes, that's the way we, we want to be. Because what? We... As humans, want to be served. And we want to be exalted up. And what Jesus tells them, he says, you know, first of all, you really don't understand what you're asking for here. You don't understand. Oh, and by the way, you will suffer. He didn't tell them that they'll understand this later. It's called Pentecost. You will suffer and you will be baptized in the way that I do. You will suffer and you will have affliction. You see, what they were doing is they were looking at being exalted as something is, uh, that, that, that meant that the people would be taken care of and they would be taken care of and, and they would have people falling at their feet. When he turns it around at the end of this and says, no, this is what it means. It means that you will become a slave to others. That's pretty big words, isn't it? For I came to serve not to be served. And for the one that sits at the right hand and the left hand, that's not for me to determine who that is. But you're going to become a slave to others. In other words, what you're going to do is you're going to lose all control over your life in order to be in those spots. That you're going to have to sacrifice greatly in order to be there. And that the farthest thing the farthest thing from that position is you being served. You see, that's really what it's about. It really comes down to this. Is that as people of God, what do we do? And what we have to do is we take that, that compassionate heart of Jesus Christ on our own. And that becomes a part of us. And so what do we do? We, we follow that example of Jesus Christ and what he did for us. You see, the reality of it is, is that he went out there and he died for the entire world. You can imagine. Just the people sitting in here. The weight of that. 
You can imagine how much sin that is just simply there. My like Cassie, in her short life, she's got all kinds of sin, doesn't she? That's not true. How about somebody who's got a little bit more gray up here? How many sins have we done? Remember, I'm not just simply talking about the things that we know that we do. I'm talking about the things that we've done in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, which, by the way, is probably more than what we've actually done. We've not loved God with our whole heart. Have we always, can we always say that we've done that? We've not loved our neighbor as ourselves. Oh, and by the way, it's not only that, is that Jesus also died for those people that are out there in the world. You know that in the world, right, in the United States alone, there's 356 million people. I think it's like 3.8 billion people in the entire world. Just think of the sins that you've done today. And, and the day has barely even started. We haven't even made it to lunch yet. Can you imagine bearing that weight? But that's what Jesus Christ did. And not only just simply for today, but for the last 2,000 years. Even more than the last 2,000 years for, depending on, uh, on, on how you count it, the 15,000 years that this, this world has been in existence. That's a lot of sin. That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of servanthood. In fact, that is servitude. You see, that's what Christ did for us. He did that so that he could, so that you today could probably be called children. And as children of God, what do we do? We bear that same heart. One that doesn't seek to serve ourselves. You see, that's what baptism did. Is it changed our heart? It changed it from one that says, I want to be served, to let, how do I serve? In fact, that's really the question that Jesus wants us to ask ourselves. How can I serve my neighbor? How can I not only serve that neighbor that's next door that always brings me cookies, that always says hello, but how can I serve the neighbor across the street that, you know, that, that, that he's not too nice at all? In fact, when I go out there, he always, you know, I take my dog out there, he always sprays my dog with water. Sometimes he sprays me. The guy that never has a kind word to say. How can I serve him? And that's really what God said, because that's how God does it. That's how Jesus did on the cross. He died for the sins of not only his people, but he also died for the sins of the entire world. It says, for, John tells us, it says, for God so loved the world. And by the way, it's kind of a neat turnaround, isn't it? Because he went from somebody that wanted to be served to telling us the greatest thing and really the summation of our faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes shall not perish but have eternal life. Yeah, even you, Cassie. That's right. Yeah. So, that's the thing about it. That's what's so neat about it. And so as children of God, what do we do? We want that same heart. And so we too need to ask that same question. How can we serve? It can be done in little ways by just simply, by just simply singing a song and telling people about Jesus' love. It could be in other ways where we go and we, we serve and we help in a soup kitchen or we, or we bring food in so that it can be taken to hospitality house. It could be done in other ways. Because really, if we understand it from this standpoint, that what God calls us to do is bear the burdens of our neighbor. Not simply to think about ourselves, to help bear their burdens. Which means when they're sick, we help. When they're thirsty, we give them something to drink. When they're hungry, we give them food. And by the way, when they're thirsty, we not only give them that which they need to drink, but the same thing that Jesus gave the woman at the well, and that is the living waters, the waters that brings eternal life, that will, that will never hunger or thirst again, which is the Word of God. You see, those are the things that the world needs. 
Those are the things that our neighbors see. And so out of our hearts, that's what we do, is we find out what we can do. And, and the thing, the great thing about it is, though, is Jesus is still there beside of us. He uses us in order to do His will. He uses us in order to serve our neighbor, to tell our neighbor, to proclaim to our neighbor. But He also tells us this, that even in our servanthood, He still continues to serve us. For the Scriptures tell us this. He tells us that He tells that, that he says, give my, your burdens to me and I'll give you my yoke, which is light. You see, the thing about it is, is that even when we serve in it, and it's not a pleasant thing that we do, Jesus is right there along with us, taking on that burden as well and working right beside of us. The Holy Spirit is there with us. He's, doing the, he's the one doing the heavy work. When we proclaim that word of God, all we have to do is proclaim it. It's the Holy Spirit that has to convert, not us. When we help a neighbor, all we have to do is show God's love. It's the Holy Spirit that has to convert. You see, that's the great thing about it is, is that when God uses us, He doesn't even make us do the heavy work. He just gives us the light stuff. But of course, in our human nature, what do we want to do? We want to be served rather than be served. But that's where he once again reminds us that he served us through the cross. And that through that, even when we fall short, even when that I word kind of comes in, he forgives those sins and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You see, because the reality of it is, is we don't want to do it. And even as a pastor, there's times, and I'll, we'll conclude with, with this story. This is a true story. It happened. Back in my previous congregation, I went through a particular time when things were really rough. I was working probably 80 hours a week, if, if, if not more. There were things going on in the church. There were difficulties. There were challenges. And believe me, at that time, I just wanted to get away. I wanted to be served, right? And so my family and I, we took a trip down to Orlando. And it was one of those, bite my tongue, that we didn't set up to go to Disney World. But we stayed in the Orlando area. And what we decided to do was go to the different, uh, different uh, club things that are there, you know, the, uh, event type of things. And one of the particular ones that we went to was a place called Capone's. I don't know if anybody's ever been there before, but it's kind of a neat thing. It's a dinner theater kind of thing. And we went there, and of course, it's all around, you know, Al Capone and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, they started off the evening. It was a dinner club, so you started off the evening going in, uh, to a buffet dinner. And the way that they had everything seated was a lot like what our fellowship hall is, is they had... They had table seating and over there. And so we went, we got our food, and we sat down. And there was this other lady that was on the other side of the table. Remember, I didn't want anybody to know who I was. And believe me, there was nothing there that showed that I was a pastor. And I was any different than what they were. And so I sat there and we were started, started talking. I don't even know how we got on the conversation. But all of a sudden she told us that she was from England and that uh, she was over there. But she started telling us some of her burdens. She started some of the challenges that she was having and everything. And by the time it was over, I knew what God was doing. He used me as his servant during a time when I really didn't want to talk about it. I really didn't want to have any, I didn't want to proclaim anything. I just wanted to be served. But what he did, was he used me in order to take, talk to this lady that was just in the right place, in Al Capone's place. Kind of, kind of ironic, isn't it? To talk about Jesus Christ. And I encouraged her to go home and talk to her pastor back home. She hadn't been in church in years. She gave me her email and I gave her her mind. And I only talked to her, I emailed her a couple of times. But with all the burdens that she had, the Lord lift, used me to lift those burdens that night. And I pointed to, to it. And I sent her uh, just a quick little email that said, hey, just want to check and see if you've been able to go talk to your pastor. She said, I did. 
And I'm involved in the church. And it's great. And I checked on her a little while later and she was going to church regularly. You see, the thing about it is, though, is our opportunities to serve come at, at times so that we least expect it. And it comes in ways that, 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 that we, we, we can't even imagine. The Lord took that lady and did what the scriptures say. She cast her burdens upon him. And he lightened that load. You see, there's a whole world out there that needs their load lightened. There's a whole, a whole lot of people out there that don't even know the love of Jesus Christ. And sometimes God brings it to us. Sure, we may have to give up being served for a little while. And by the way, it's, it's okay to go to places like Punta Cana and those type of things. It's okay to, 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 that's why we go on vacation, isn't it? It's okay for those things. But to realize that as I didn't that didn't hear very well. As are you just shell shocked or what? <laughs> but as children of God, to realize that God gives us opportunities. And what he does is he moves our heart. That even in those times when we think that we're just there about being served, that he can use us. He can use us to be servants to others. So the question I ask you once again is the question that you need to ask yourself. How can I be a servant? How can I serve? In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now take our tithes and our